In this video, I'm going to show you how to enter a case for the QE part two. So first thing, I log into the developer portal here, and here I'm going to show you how to develop a case for the qualifying exam part two. So the first thing you'll notice there are these tabs uh, in the top right corner, and the first one is my questions and if you click on that it'll show you all the cases and questions that you've developed here on the left hand side. The second tab is documents and if you click on that it will show you a long list of documents that we've uploaded that will help you develop your cases. So for example for a QE part 2, MCC QE part 2, we've uploaded uh, guidelines, we've uploaded sample cases, uh, a lot of information that we hope will help you develop your cases. Uh, the next tab is instructional videos. If you click on that, it will show you uh, videos that help you develop cases on these templates. One of those videos is the one you're watching right now. Uh, the next tab is password. That's just to change your password. And the final one is contact us. If at any time you have any questions, please contact us and we'll help you. So now let's get started with developing the case. So the first thing you would do is from this drop down menu you would choose QBank for the MCC QE Part 2. And when you do that you have three choices because there's three types of cases. There's a five minute case that involves history taking, a five minute case that involves physical exam, and a ten minute case. So I will show you in this video how to create a case for the first one which is a five minute case that involves history taking and then click on this new case button and then the template will come. And I'll enlarge the template here. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you in this template before we get started is these three links. Please uh, click on these links and read the information to familiarize yourself with this exam. The first one is detailed information about the MCCQE Part 2. The next one are the objectives for this exam and the final link is the candidate general info. These three links contain valuable information about the actual exam that will help you uh, in your development of these cases. So now this is the first part, uh, that's what this one means, of the template. So the very first thing you would do is choose a subject. So let's just choose medicine. When you choose a subject, uh, a list of topics will appear. Now these topics are preloaded because these are the topics that we need cases developed about. Uh, so let's just choose one here. And then one thing that will happen is when you choose a topic some information will appear here. This is information that we hope you will use uh, when you create your actual uh, case. Sometimes the information is very brief while other times it might be a little uh, longer. Um, I'm trying to find one that's longer. But, oh, here's one. Here's one has a lot of information. And the point of this information is to help you uh, with regard to what you will enter uh, into the case. And this is uh, some of the things that we feel are relevant to this topic, and we hope that you will use it. All right. So now that we have entered our subject and topic, the next thing we do is we start entering the case. So the first thing is this opening stem. This is the first thing that the that you will enter into your case. Now you have a choice. You can enter the information uh, directly onto the template or you can do uh, what I prefer to do which is type it out into a document and then cut and paste. Now uh, the only reason I do that is because uh, the software I use to type in my documents allow uh, have a spell check whereas the template doesn't. So here's my uh, opening stem. I've already written it out and I'm going to just copy and paste it into the template and just like that. Now the next uh, uh, drop down menu asks you to choose a candidate task. So there's three possible choices. There's obtain a focused and relevant history. There's obtain a focused and relevant history from the parent. That would be a case involving a child. And the last one is obtain focused and relevant history and address 
any of the patient's concerns. So you choose one of those three. And then click Save. And that will save the first part of the template. Now we go to part two, which is the examiner's checklist. Now the examiner's checklist, we give you some information about what that is and you know to help you understand better. Basically what it is is on the day of the exam, the person who is taking the test will walk in and to a patient room and there will be a person there pretending to be a patient. So the examinee, the person who is taking this exam, will have to ask the patient these questions. And then the exam the once the examinee asks these questions one at a time the patient uh, the, or the actor pretending to be a patient will answer back these responses listed here on the right hand side. Now what we've done we, is we've preloaded 17 uh, possible questions. Now you don't have to use these. You can if you want if you feel that they're relevant to your case. And we've also listed uh, you know sample answers that the patient would give. You can use these or you can delete them all by clicking this button and then start entering your own. So let's see, that's what I've done because my case that I wrote is about uh, cough. So I just uh, start cutting and pasting, uh, really. This is my first question. And I have to, of course, type in a patient's answer and uh, so uh, cough started two months ago um, you know and it's important that you break these up uh, so don't just put everything on the same line like I have uh, break it up so asks about onset asks about uh, duration asks about progression etc. And of course you would fill in the answer so the duration is uh, five minutes at a time whenever the person coughs it lasts for five minutes. Progression, getting worse, so on. And if I go back to my uh, case these are some of the things that I've written. Um, I've written about onset, duration, progression, frequency, aggravating, alleviating factors, associated symptoms, past medical history, a family history, smoking history, medications. So these are allergies of, and also allergies. These are the questions that I feel are relevant to the person's uh, initial complaint. And um, that's what this checklist is essentially. You're, you're just entering questions that you will ask, or rather the examinee will ask, and the answers that the patient will give. We've uh, put in 17. If you don't need 17, just click delete. If you need more than 17, you need click on this Add Checklist item and you can enter as many as you want. And then once you're done with this section, just click on Save. And then now we get to the next section, which is Section 3. Section 3 involves um, this scoring table, but you actually don't have to do anything to the scoring table. It's just there as a, uh, it's just there for your information. It's part of the case. You don't have to do anything. The part that you have to do in this, um, or you have to complete, is this part right here where it says patient interaction rating scale items. There's a 17 of these items, and you need to check which of these items are involved in the case. Now, what do these 17 items refer to? Well, please click on this link, patient interaction rating scale items, and it will bring up a list of those 17 items and it will explain what each item is about. So the first item is initiation of interview. Second item is listening skills. Third item is questioning skills. So what you need to do is look through these 17 items and go back to your template and check which of those 17 items are involved in this case. So for example, just really quickly, um, in this case, we're not doing a physical exam because this is a history taking case so item 10 is not involved um, ethical conduct that is involved professional behavior that is involved so 8 and 9 are involved so I click on 8 and 9 I hope that makes sense so similarly go through the 17 and click on whichever ones you feel are involved in the case click save 
And that's all there is to that. Now we get into patient information. Patient information, please take your time with this. This is a very important part of the template. You will type in all the patient information that is relevant to this case. And we've put boxes for each possible category. And uh, in the end, what this will create is a very detailed presentation uh, for the person who is preparing for this exam with regard to this patient. So for, for example, the very first box is patient starting position. What that means is when you walk into the room, what's going on? How is the patient? So for example, patient is sitting on exam table coughing. Uh, that's, that's what I would see on this case when I walked into the exam, exam room. Uh, similarly, for other presentations, it would be different. Clothing. Uh, patient is wearing a gown uh, and whatever else. Makeup. Uh, sometimes the patients uh, uh, use certain makeup to um, show certain things. Like, for example, uh, uh, maybe they had a bruise, so there's a bruise um, makeup uh, showing a bruise on their face. Um, these are actors pretending to be patients, so there's, they sometimes will use uh, makeup uh, to um, show certain things. Patient's opening statement. This is the first thing that the patient will say to you when you walk in the room. So it might be, uh, Doc, I have a terrible cough for uh, two months. Um, tried over-the-counter meds. Uh, no help. Now starting to cough up blood. Very worried. You know, something like that. Patient behavior. Um, like I said, it, it will vary so much. I'm just giving you some samples, sample uh, uh, possibilities that you can type in. Uh, patient might be worried, or patient might be calm. Patient is uh, um, anxious. You know, questions patient must ask. Uh, the next one is may ask. So there's a difference there. Must ask are questions that absolutely are involved in this case. So for example, uh, patient asks you um, do I have cancer you know I mean like I said it, it's so varied but uh, you have to sort of think about what are the most appropriate must ask questions questions that the patient may ask is uh, patient um, may ask you about uh, I don't know uh, does he need surgery uh, okay, history of present problems. So this is where you really need to take some time and answer all these questions. Onset, duration, progression, frequency, quality, and intensity. So these are very important. So onset, two months ago. Uh, progression, oh, duration, um, when the cough does happen in five minutes at a time. That's how long the duration of the cough is. Progression, uh, it's getting worse. Frequency. Um, happens daily. Quality and intensity. Um, quality and intensity are more related to pain. Uh, so for example, if a person was in pain, his pain is, uh, they're asking you to describe it. Is it throbbing, aching, uh, sharp, stabbing, things like that. Quality of the pain. Intensity is really uh, usually given as an answer on a, on a scale of 1 to 10. So it's 8 out of 10 is the pain. And you could have pain with cough, but that's just this question. Uh, alleviating aggravating factors. Alleviating is really what makes it worse. Sorry, alleviating is what makes it better. So alleviating factors might be, um, I don't know, over-the-counter medicine. And aggravating factors are what makes it worse. So aggravating for this patient might be smoking. Uh, precipitating incident or prior events um, that's something that you can include um, location of the pain and in this case probably the chest is it radiating anywhere um, right arm and associated symptoms 
um, hemoptysis in this case, coughing up blood, maybe he has some nausea and vomiting. Uh, so this, this takes some time and put in a good history of present problem. Um, there's actually a mnemonic, um, there's actually more than one, but it's ODP, FLR, QI, AAA. O is onset, D is duration, P is progression, F is frequency, L is location, R is radiation, Q is quality, I is intensity, AAA, A is alleviating factors, the second A is aggravating factors, and the last A is associated symptoms. So that's something to help you. Patient issues. Um, describe the patient's concerns and perception of the problem. So he feels this is very serious. Uh, past medical history, perhaps he has COPD, um, maybe he has, I don't know, tuberculosis in the past. Relevant social and family history, uh, social history, he smokes, um, no alcohol use. Family history, um, he has a family history of lung cancer. And then review of some systems. Similarly, go through this and um, just give the pertinent positives. So, uh, you know, so he has positive cough, positive hemoptysis, um, the pertinent positives. Patient simulation, um, you need to provide information explaining what must be simulated to ensure a credible presentation. So what this patient absolutely must simulate, what this patient who is an actor absolutely must need to do while you are in the examining room. So for example, he must need to cough or express concern, etc. Physical findings, uh, if the, if the uh, case involved is a physical exam case, you need to uh, write what we need to find on a physical exam. So for example, if this case involved abdominal pain, we must find um, abdominal pain on physical exam. And then um, which, where, what is the location? So right upper quadrant, etc. Information giving. Um, describe the patient's concerns uh, and their expected uh, responses to the candidate questions. So we've given you some uh, samples like the, the patient gets angry or the patient is uh, calm. So you, you're trying to explain a little bit about the patient's uh, perception of the problem and their response, the way they respond to you. And that's important too. And pertinent negative. So what does the patient not have? So, for example, the important things that are the patient does not have. So there's no fever, there's no weight loss, whatever you feel are pertinent negatives. And once you're done, click Save. So that's an important section. You'll have to spend some time on that. The second last section is this post-encounter probe. At the end of every five-minute case, there will be a question and answer. And we've tried to do our best to explain how to prepare this question and answer for this case. And we've given you sample questions, sample answers. And here's the template. Now I've already written out some sample questions and I'll copy and paste them. Here's the first one that I created. And the first question I created was, what is the most likely diagnosis? And then you need to enter three questions. And then for each question, you need to enter in three, well not three, but answers. Uh, and I have actually have three. And let's see, I'll enter those in, I'll type those in. I've written bronchitis, uh, lung neoplasm, and asthma. Now, the scoring is the important part. What you're really doing is you're creating possible answers, but some of these answers will have a higher score than others because they're, they're better answers. So you have to decide. So I'll give bronchitis a score of 2, I'll give lung neoplasm a score of 1, and asthma a score of 1. And the maximum score is 2. 
So let me explain what this means. If on the actual exam, the patient is asked, what is the most likely diagnosis? If they answer bronchitis, they would get a score of 2. If they answer lung neoplasm, they'd only get a score of 1. Similarly, with asthma, they'd only get a score of 1. That's because based on all the information they've been presented in the case, bronchitis is the best choice. And I hope that makes sense. I'll put in one more question here to give you a little bit more uh, information about this part. So the second question I wrote was, what is the most appropriate next step in patient care in terms of diagnostic testing? Okay, now I've put in chest x-ray as one of them, sputum culture as another possible, and my last one was CT of chest. Now I need to give these uh, uh, choices a, a weight. So I've decided that based on my case and based on all the information that chest x-ray is the best answer. Sputum culture, sure, but it's not that great of an answer. And CT of the ch chest, sure, it's an okay answer, but it's probably not the best answer. And I've decided that I'm going to give this a maximum of four. And what that means is that on the day of the exam, the, patient, the, the examinee can put in chest x-ray and sputum culture and score three points for chest x-ray and four points for sputum culture and score the maximum. So I hope that makes sense. And then I have one more question about what appropriate counseling would you give? And I wrote smoking sensation, discuss about bronchodilators, discuss about spirometry, and similarly I've given it a score. And that's uh, the post-encounter probe, save section. And then finally, this is a section called references. You just enter a reference that you use to create the case. So uh, author of textbook, uh, James Smith, name of textbook, I don't know, manual of uh, chest diseases, um, year of publication 2008, pages cited, pages 235 to 265, and then click save section. And that's it. That is your case entered entirely, and then you would submit it for review by clicking this. Once you submit it for review, it will be sent to our editors and they will review it and give you feedback about what you need to do to improve the case and if, if the case is completely um, uh, what they're looking for and it doesn't need any revision or the revisions have been complete it will be approved and then you will receive payment. One final thing I wanted to mention is at any time you can click on this preview button and it will show you what the case will look like once it is approved this is what you've created. Now I haven't filled in everything, but this is what the case looks like. Once you've, let me blow this up a bit. Once you have completed the case, you see the candidate instruction, the opening stem, the patient information, and the checklist. Now notice I did, I only enter, entered three ch checklist items, but if you enter all your checklist items, they will appear there. Um, the patient interaction scales, and the post-encounter probe with the questions and the answers. So I hope this helps. If at any time you have any questions, please contact us by clicking on this tab, and we will try to answer your questions and help you and guide you to help you better create these cases.